In the previous video, we took a look at squash and stretch. And I showed you how to make a very simple yet functional rig for your ball so that you could get squash and stretch on it. You can squash the ball and stretch the ball, and yet it'll stay planted on the ground. Uh, and by selecting the ball itself within the group, you can also rotate it. Now while this, uh, this rig is fully functional, it will work, it'll do what you want it to do, it does have some disadvantages. And some of the disadvantages I see are that when I want to do squash and stretch, I need to stretch it on one axis and then squash it on uh, the two other axes. So in other words, I have to animate three different channels to get the squash and stretch. In addition, when I want to rotate the ball, I need to select a different object and then rotate that. So it's a fine setup, it works. However, I would like to, in this video, show you a more advanced setup that I created. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of this rig that I've set up. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one here. Um, once again, we've got another beach ball. And this circle, this is the control that you can do just about all the animation you want on this ball. So in other words, we can, we can do all our translates with this control. Uh, we can do our rotates with this control. Uh, but also, what you'll notice is that I've created a, uh, a unique channel here called Squash. And with this one single channel, instead of animating three different, um, three different scales, X, Y, and Z, you can just animate one channel called squash. So if I select the squash channel here in the channel box and I use my left mouse button uh, in the viewport here, I can squash it and I can stretch it. In addition, I can come in here and still rotate the ball in any of these axes that I choose. So let's see what we can do with animating this. Once again, I'm going to start with it on the ground and it's going to jump. So I have my control selected. I'll go ahead and key it. I will go once again to frame 21 and I'll do my squash. I'll go to frame 24 and do a stretch. Twelve frames later, we'll bring the ball up. And return it back to its default state. Key it. Bring it back down on frame 48, add maybe a little bit of stretch to imply movement, and we'll key it. After it hits the ground, it will squash. And let's just take a look and see what we have so far. So once again, you can see that we have some of the same problems that we had with the uh, previous example in my previous video. Uh, but these are simple fixes. They just require going into the graph editor. So I have my control selected here. I'll go to my graph editor, select the y-axis. I will break 
the, uh, the tangent, both where it takes off and where it lands, so that we don't have this slow out and slow in. Let's check it out. Already it should be looking a lot better. And I'll continue animating. So I've finished animating the ball. And what I'd like to do now is a quick review of uh, rendering it. And this time we won't render it using the Play Blast. We'll do an actual render. Now I've already done a little bit of the setup already. I'll talk through a little bit of that. Uh, for instance, I did create two lights. I created a spotlight and an ambient light. Uh, I also created a camera specifically to render from, uh, and I named it My Camera. I've changed the background of that camera so that uh, we'll get this very dark purple color as the background instead of a black background. Uh, what else have I done? So I've also uh, turned this button on so that we can see the uh, borders of our composition so that we can see the borders of our render. That way when I scrub through the animation I can see that it's not going to get cut off. Uh, so what we should do now is go to the render settings and make sure that everything is set up for our render. So remember that your render settings can be found here. It's this clapboard icon with the gear. I'll click on it. I am using Maya software. Uh, I need to tell it a name. I'll give my render a name. So I'm just going to call it Squash and Stretch. I need to tell it the image format. I'm going to save it as an AVI because we are creating a video file. Uh, very importantly, I must not forget to set the frame range. Currently it's set from 1 to 10. I have my timeline set all the way to 100, so I'm going to make my end frame 100. Another very important thing to set up, remember I created my own camera called My Camera. Uh, but currently, if I don't change anything in the render settings, it's going to render from my perspective camera and not my camera that I uh, created specifically for this render. So I'll go to this dropdown and select my camera. Uh, I've already come in here and set the dimensions. I'm, I'm going to use the HD 720 preset for this. Uh, another thing to make sure that you're aware of is where you are saving your video file to. I am currently working in a project called CMT223. In that project is a folder called Images, and that is where it's going to save my AVI. Now that I've set up all of uh, these settings on, on this tab, on the Common tab, I'm going to go to the Maya Software tab. And rather than doing quality custom edge anti-aliasing low quality, I'm going to take the quality dropdown and select production quality. That will also improve the anti-aliasing property, as you can see here. And before I actually do a render, 
I uh, oftentimes like to do a test render of a single frame. So I'm going to scrub in my animation, perhaps right here where it hits the ground, and I'm going to do a uh, just a regular still image render. Uh, I will do that by clicking on this button here, the clapboard. Here is what my render will look like. Let's save this image or keep this image within the render view so that we can compare it to uh, some other settings that we can explore uh, with this. So where I'd like to bring your attention now is here to motion blur. I'll go to the drop down and I will select motion blur. And now let's render out this very same frame here. And what you'll notice is that we get this nice motion blur on this frame, indicating that uh, the ball is in motion. Let's keep that image so that we can compare it to this original image. We can compare the two here. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and try blurring by frame. We'll Currently it's set to one. What if we set it to three? Do another render. And you can see that that will give us yet more blur. I'm going to go ahead and settle for, I think, a number of two. We'll try that. And let's try that as our setting. We'll keep it on two. And here's the interesting thing. Let's go ahead and keep that. That way we can compare these uh, different states here. Uh, one of the principles we've been talking about has been about spacing. And we know that uh, between your keyframes, when something moves faster, it moves over a greater distance. And in fact, with motion blur, we will be able to see this as well. Uh, we know that at this point, the ball is moving quite fast, but we also know that at its peak, at its apex here, it really isn't moving all that quickly. So if we were to do a render of it at that frame, you'll see that we do get some motion blur, but not nearly as much because it just isn't moving as fast. So now that we have that all set up, perhaps we can go ahead and do our render. I'm just going to take a quick look at this and see if I've got my shadows doing what I really want them to do. And I think that will work. We'll give that a try. Okay, so now we're going to render it. We're going to do an actual proper render, not a play blast render. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this drop down. We'll select rendering. Uh, I will then go to rendering, batch render and we'll let it do its thing. You'll notice that the status of our render can be seen here. It currently says that it's rendering with the Maya software. However, it hasn't actually started yet. Uh, but soon we should see uh, that the status uh, within that field will change and then we'll know that it is busy working, that it is actually rendering out our animation. Another place where we can take a look at that would be here in the script editor. If we open up the script editor, you'll see it's moving very quickly, rendering frame by frame. Remember that we've got 100 frames, so this won't take very long, but it does take a little bit of time. Okay, so my render has completed. We can see that down here where it says rendering completed. We can also see it in our script editor where it also says rendering completed. Uh, here you can also see the path where it saved this AVI. Let's go check out the AVI. So here is my uh, my render that I just created. And I want you to notice that the file size is quite large. It's over 360 kilobytes. Uh, in a previous video, I used Handbrake to 
uh, it's free software to uh, compress the video to make it a smaller file size and that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm just going to take this squash and stretch AVI that we just created and drop it in here. Uh, a couple settings I'll need to change because if we take a look at the dimensions we can see that the original dimensions are 1280 by 720. Uh, currently it's set to 12. Actually Right now, these settings are good because it's keeping the same settings I used in my previous video. But you should be aware of these settings. If you use this software, you want to make sure uh, that you're not decreasing the size of it if that's not your intention. And uh, you also want to make sure that you're not cropping it uh, unnecessarily here. So with everything looking good here, I just need to make sure I know where I'm going to be saving it to. And I will go ahead and start the encode. So I've taken my video and using Handbrake, I've brought what was originally 300, over 360 kilobytes and now it is only 47. Quite impressive. Uh, let's check it out, see how it looks. I will open up this compressed video and as you can see, it actually looks pretty good. So I probably should have spent a little bit more time working on the lighting and the background color. Perhaps a lighter background would be more effective here. In any case, I hope that this has been helpful for you and thanks for watching.